three, two, one. You ready? You're listening to the Real Pineapple Podcast Network. Humble host Hunter here. Hope you're all having a great uh, day so far whenever you're listening to this. So this is review number six in our real holiday series. Got a review here for Grandmothered, uh, which is the new Disney Plus original movie, which is directed uh, by Sharon uh, McGuire. Sharon McGuire has a really random but somewhat interesting uh filmography so she did the um she did this ewan mcgregor oh my god i forgot about this movie this movie with ewan mcgregor and michelle williams called uh in the in Cine, uh in Cine, uh, incendiary uh which came out in 09 i don't even remember that movie but uh her first big debut was bridget jones diary directed that um, back in uh, 2001, and then she went ahead and directed Bridget Jones's Baby in 2016, which also did well and was liked by the critics. So this is really her. Uh, this is really her fourth uh, part, uh, fourth uh, film she's directing. And I have to say, okay, this is going to sound like a backhanded compliment, but it, it's really not intended as such. This film is exactly where it needs to be. It's on Disney Plus. So, as far as the plot's concerned, this uh, this film follows Eleanor, who's played by Jillian Bell, who, if you haven't seen uh, Workaholics, of course, you probably know her from there, most likely. If you haven't seen Britney Runs a Marathon, uh, I would highly recommend you seek it out. It is well worth your time. It's an Amazon, uh, Amazon uh, uh, exclusive or an Amazon Prime video film. Well worth your time. Really enjoyed that. Uh, I remember her, of course, from stuff like rough uh rough night fist fight um uh, oh yeah she's in bill and ted I, I i'm a huge fan of hers and she does a great job of playing awkward so much of her her vibe her characters that she plays really lean to the fact of the uncomfortable and this really works well here because it's the whole fish out of water story so basically to make this a uh, very uh, simple. There is this world. Uh, 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 there's this world where uh, f- fairies are trained to be godmothers. So okay, just real quick about that. They they're trying to s- explain this and establish this world, and it really felt like they watched Harry Potter and went, "We want to make this kind of like Harry Potter, but we don't really want to spend the time." To build the world like they do in Harry Potter because we're going to send her uh, to, you know, Earth anyway. So who the hell cares? And so I think if they had spent maybe 15, probably even 20 minutes actually establishing the world before they just go, all right, you're no longer here. It would have hit a little harder. But for what we have, uh, uh, Moira, uh, Myra, who's played by Jane Curtin, who, of course, if you know Jane Curtin, uh, you know Jane Curtin. Uh she was in Can You Ever Forgive Me, which she was excellent in, uh, you know, from stuff like uh, The Heat, Ants, uh, Third Rock from the Sun is where I remember her, uh, and uh, uh, I and No Shame in My Game. I like The Good Wife. Uh, I watched some of it. She was on there a couple times, but she is the head uh, godmother, and she's the one who's training everyone, and so basically... More, uh, less people are believing in magic and in their happily ever after. So the fairly uh, the fairy godmothers they have there aren't having jobs to go out on, and so they're essentially losing their magic. That's kind of how they explain it. I might be giving the film more credit, but I digress. So uh, Eleanor basically finds this letter written from uh, Mackenzie Walsh, uh, and I will say I do appreciate. <sighs> They telegraph it like there's no tomorrow, but, you know, she finds this dusty letter from this this little redheaded girl saying, you know, I want people like me and she needs help. Uh, can, can, can you help the boy I like to like me is what the letter ends up saying. And this uh, girl, this little girl ends up being played by grown up uh, Isla Fisher. 
And I will say when Eleanor does get to uh, to Earth, which it doesn't even matter how she gets there, but when she does, I did appreciate the fish out of water stuff that day. I won't say this is as good as the first door because it's definitely not, but there is a scene where she gets a uh, she uh, hit, hit uh, this woman picks her up who's uh, driving like a truck, and it's a really sweet scene because when she gets in the car for the first time or the truck, she's freaking out like, "What the hell is this?" I did laugh really hard at that. I was kind of like, "Okay, that, that's 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 kind of funny." She lands in this pumpkin patch when she initially uh, crosses over to a world and just fucks up this pu- pumpkin patch, and I just really felt really sad for the person who owned that pumpkin patch like wow that must absolutely suck but here's my big complaint with the movie for the fact is the film talks about the fact that they have magic and that they're able to uh peer into other realms so i would think if eleanor now now i know she wasn't a very strong uh fairy but wouldn't you attempt to try to peek into how earth works so you wouldn't be so you know shocked when you get here because she has this moment almost like in a borat subsequent movie to a film uh with borat's daughter where she f- freaks out because she goes women don't drive themselves that's what mice are for which i will say i laughed really hard at for some reason even though it's not a good joke but it's a uh, uh, but the truck driver gets her in town and that's where she meets uh, Mackenzie. He's working on a news station. That is, I want to say thir- uh, fifth place, fifth place in local news. And uh, Grant is uh, the guy's name who is played by, and I'm going to butcher this. I'm sorry, man. Uh, Ut- Utkosh uh, Ambudkar. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not going to try that again, <laughs> but he plays Grant, and he's just an asshole of a boss, always riding McKenzie, uh, phrasing, sorry, but always just giving her crap about her work and her work ethic. And if this film does something very well, yes, you have to really allow some things to pass by. Like, this is a world where someone like Isla Fisher, who's as charming as she is and gorgeous as she is, would be single. That is a very, I mean, that's almost magical in itself. So, I mean, I'll admit, I was really sitting there going, really? That's that's absurd. But also, the other thing you have to, you just have to kind of, at a point, go is, it's a Christmas movie. And there was just a point, I just sat back and went, fine, this is a Christmas movie. Like, I was never mad at this, but there are just these points where I went, all right, there, there's a point where Eleanor... Uh, ends up going back with Mackenzie and staying at her place uh, with her and her daughter uh, Jane, played by Jillian Shay uh, Spader, and then her or her uh, cousin, I can't remember if her cousin or her sister, but uh, Paula, who's played by Mary Elizabeth Ellis, who you know is the waitress on <laughs> on It's Always Sunny, which I, I it's so weird to see her in this, uh, but. Something that was a really pleasant surprise, and, and as far as just what kind of irritated me, but there's just there's a point where Eleanor has this raccoon that ha- that learns to sweep, and so she's ordering this raccoon around to go ahead and like, oh no, I need you to do this, and this is how you decorate the tree. And there are just these points in the movie where I just went, okay, fine, it's a Christmas movie, whatever. Also, this movie is an hour and 50 minutes. It's almost two hours. This could have been a lean 90 like, it really could have been 90 minutes very easily. And I will say myself, I was putting together this movie so freaking easily. So, you know, Eleanor comes and is, you know, going to help teach her, uh, teach Mackenzie how to love. And, oh, her husband's not there. I'm sure he died in a car accident. He does, by the way. Just these these things where I just went, yep, set my watch. Yep, there's that cliche. There's that cliche. There's that cliche. But... What really did endear me a little bit here is that Mackenzie and Eleanor do have really good chemistry, and there are a couple cringe moments that I actually did chuckle at. There's a point where Eleanor has this al- uh, this uh, uh, this allergy that pops up that I went, okay, being from another realm, that actually does make sense that you would know about this. Uh, there's a point where Eleanor tries to turn... Uh, uh, Mackenzie's 
uh, this coat she's wearing, Mackenzie's coat into like almost like a gown, and she ends up making her look like a puffer fish. Like the jacket multiplies in size. Like I got a really good, I got a really good laugh out of that. And I'm I am a sucker for this. I fully acknowledge this because Mackenzie's hurting because things didn't go uh, with the way the, the way that she thought they would with her news career, which. To be fair and credit to the film, they did explain that in a way that I went, you know what, that actually makes sense. I'll give you that. So she's projecting onto her daughter and Jane has extreme stage fright. She has thrown up apparently on people at at a talent show. Like they kind of go through the ways that she's had these stage fright moments and you're like, oh crap, that's really unfortunate. That would, that would really uh, mess you up. And so I was a sucker for her story. You obviously know she like it. It's gonna end with her ending up singing. Like it's the whole, you know, she's going to school. There's a talent show because of course, it, you know, of course there is. And so you know, Eleanor is there to be the the supportive voice of you can do it because Eleanor just believes in everything good. And again, is it cliche as hell? Yes. Oh my god, it's very cliche. Of course, you know, Eleanor and Mackenzie are going to get along and uh, uh, Myra is going to find out she got away. So then it's a ticking clock film, like every cliche you can think of. But I'll be honest, guys, the the end where this movie ends up. Yes, you can definitely infer this one thing that I'm, that I'm I won't say I won't spoil the end as if, if, if you guys care. But there is this one thing that these films typically do that is very cliche and they didn't pull the trigger on it. And I went, you know what? Okay. It's, it, I was like, I kind of, okay, I'll say this. It's the Bumblebee ending. And it, it, think about it like that. I, I I remember sitting there watching going, you know, I actually like that they had the guts to not fall into this trope completely. So I have to give the film credit on that. Uh, the song that the daughter does sing, Jane, at the end of the movie, I thought was actually really well done. Now, I have one big problem with the movie with something that the film uh, presents, and it's similar to the ending of Elf, but this being taking place where it does or when it does, it's even more of an issue. And once you see the film, you'll you'll get what I mean. But Again, I, I chuckled throughout most of it. Getting to my final thoughts here. I chuckled. I didn't... I laughed a couple times. I, I do remember laughing a couple times. The, the, the puffer jacket thing did make me laugh. Um, uh, El- Eleanor getting this... Uh, this Having this allergic reaction did make me laugh. There's there's a point where Eleanor redecorates Mackenzie's house. And Mackenzie freaks out. And it's like, oh my god, it looks like medieval times in here. And I laughed really hard at that. Um, the CG is really rough here. There's a point early on where Eleanor attempts to fly, and it looks so fucking bad. I was like, oh, my God. But I I laughed, though. I was charmed. Uh, again, I wasn't offended. This is not something like playing with fire where I was just sitting there going, I'm questioning my life choices. I did have fun with this. And Julian Bell being so weird actually endears you more to her in this movie because it is a fish out of water story. So when she just doesn't understand things, I was like, well, she just doesn't understand, even though she didn't put in, you know, the the work to understand. So that goes a little way uh, with me. Uh, the guy, uh, Santiago uh, Cabrera, he plays uh, Hugh, who is Mackenzie's uh, co-worker slash love interest, question mark, and... I'll say he is a very charming actor. I haven't, I don't really recall seeing him uh, in anything, but he is delightful and I would love to see him in more stuff. I think he's incredibly charming. And oh, he's Style Price. Oh my God, he's Isaac, uh, he's Isaac Mendez from here. Oh my God. I was like, why, why does he look familiar? Okay, yeah, he's he's great in this and he's very charming. And him, I, him and Isla Fisher really do have some good chemistry that I went you know what? I wish this was just a better script to give you guys more to do. So this is just kind of more of a case of missed opportunity than me outright hating this. So I'm going to give this a C plus. I think this is perfectly fine for something to put on. I think there's enough gags, enough sparkly stuff that your kids would be entertained. But 
and they'll probably relate to the kid just being unsure of herself and uh, being scared. So I don't, yeah, it's fine. It's not great, but it's fine. So uh, everyone, have you seen Godmother? Let me know uh, what you think. Let us know in the comments below. You can go ahead and like us on Facebook at The Real Pineapple. Uh, don't forget to like our new gaming channel page to Real Games that's going to be launching here at the, st uh, at the start of the year. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can find us on SoundCloud, Apple and Google Podcasts, Podbean, iHeart and Stitcher Radio, and Spotify. Uh, oh, and pardon me, and Amazon Music and uh, Tune uh, and Tune Up at the Real Pineapple. And you can follow yours truly at the Twitter at J Hunter Real Pineapple. And you can follow Scott on Twitter at Nearman the First. Thank you so much, everyone, for continuing to listen. Uh, we love you. Please stay safe out there. Wear a mask. Uh, enjoy this holiday season. We'll have more reviews, uh, more holiday uh, film episodes and reviews uh, coming your way here soon. Um, every day leading up until Christmas Day, which I will have a review of Soul and Wonder Woman 84 uh, coming out on Christmas Day. I'm really excited to, uh, for uh, you guys to hear those. But please stay safe, everyone, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.